are proud to feature Zephyr Environmental Corporation as part of our delegation at Singapore International Water Week. With extensive projects throughout the United States and the Middle East, Zephyr's work has been highly sought by corporations and municipalities to help design environmental impacts for existing power plants and industry, as well as whole new cities like King Abdullah Economic City in Saudi Arabia. Zephyr provides an integrated offering as they work not only for air pollution control officials, but also marine industry officials. Zephyr Environmental Corporation is a full-service environmental consulting firm, and by that I mean we have people on staff who handle air issues and water issues and solid waste issues, basically all of the environmental media uh, that, you would, uh, that you would encounter. Uh, we're based in the United States. We have a few offices here in the, in the States. We also have a, a presence in the Middle East and uh, in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Um, in addition to our traditional consulting, that air and waste and, and, and water, we also have a, a unique branch of our organization that has to do with the uh, uh, Hazmat Academy is what we call it. Uh, it's training for um, emergency response, emergency preparedness, environmental health and safety, those issues. And we offer that you know, throughout the world to a wide variety of clients. Uh, some of the more interesting projects Zephyr has done in the, in the Middle East over the past ooh, decade or so our first premier project was with the Dubai municipality, uh, the government of the Emirate of Dubai and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, they had the foresight to conduct the Middle East's first large-scale air, air quality study, and by large scale, I mean something that focused on the entire city, not just a particular particular industry. And uh, we conducted some uh, air pollution dispersion modeling to predict levels of air pollution throughout the Emirate, uh, use that information to identify some of the key contributing sources to uh, air pollution issues in Dubai and we took that information to some of the highest levels in the D Dubai municipality's government to help them form strategies on how to you know, mitigate future air pollution issues that, that they might have with their you know, rapidly growing rapidly growing city. Our Hazmat Academy has been active in the overseas arena as well, specifically the Middle East. Uh, I've done several high profile, uh, held several high profile courses for, for groups over there. Uh, the Dubai municipality, we've, we've trained uh, their emergency responders in emergency response, emergency preparedness. We've also trained officials from uh, the government of Abu Dhabi. Uh, one of the more interesting uh, courses that we've had the opportunity to teach over, uh, over in the Middle East was for the Marine Emergency Mutual Aid Center in Bahrain. Uh, MIMAC is uh, what they're known as, and they're, they're a unique organization. They are the only group that unites all eight countries that border the Persian Gulf in a common cause, and that cause is to you know, protect uh, the condition of, of the waterways there, the condition of the Gulf itself. Uh, the, the training that we gave them was uh, emergency response and emergency preparedness. The idea is we train their individuals, and again, they come from, from all nations, uh, we train their individuals in how to respond to an emergency, how to prioritize which decisions need to be made first, who to contact first, et cetera, et cetera. And so through that training, uh, those officials with MEMAC have been better prepared over the last few years to respond to emergencies on the Gulf, such as oil spills. As we look at you know, water issues, water quality issues at Singapore Water Week, I think it's important for people to uh, consider the effect that, that air pollution will have on water quality. It's very tempting a lot of times when you're talking about water quality to focus only on the discharges to the water, but actually it's important to consider you know, the impacts of, of uh, air pollution as well. Um, one of the, you know, the things that Zephyr has gleaned over the years with our work uh, with the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the United States, is that about a third of the nitrogen loading to the bay comes from air pollution. Uh, and that nitrogen loading is what helps you know, degrade the overall quality of the bay. It hurts the plants, it hurts the, the organisms that live in the, in the bay. Um, so it's important uh, to remember, again, with water quality that you can't just look you know, at the water. You've got to look up above the water as well as upwind to see what kinds of uh, impacts you're getting from an air pollution standpoint. Zephyr also had the good fortune of uh, participating in a strategic environmental assessment for the King Abdullah Economic City, uh, CAKE as the acronym goes. It's an $86 billion project that the Saudis uh, have started a couple years ago. Uh, they're basically building a city literally from scratch, from the ground up, on the, the coast of the Red Sea, on the west, west coast of Saudi Arabia. Analysis that we did factored in all of those sources, considered what air pollution levels were going to be like in the city five years from now, ten years from now, twenty-five years from now as it continues to be developed. We took that information you know, to the developers of the city and they used it as part of their master plan on, on repositioning you know, certain uh, complexes within the city, certain neighborhoods within the city, ultimately to try to you know, promote a living experience for the people there that was as, as healthy as possible.
So continuing with that relationship between air pollution and water pollution, it is a, 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 an up-and-coming uh, you know, topic that's gaining more and more attention in the world these days. Uh, for instance, the United States and Canada, just within, within the last year or so, uh, had their coastal waters designated as an emission control area by the International Maritime Organization, or IMO. Uh, the IMO has this program where if you can demonstrate to them that emissions from ship traffic, which burns some, some pretty dirty fuels, if you can demonstrate that emissions from ship traffic uh, play a significant role in degrading uh, your, you know, your environment, both the air and the water, uh, they will designate you know, your region or your body of water as an emission control area, uh, whereby a ship that enters that area will have to switch to a cleaner fuel. And so that will have uh, sometimes a very, very substantial impact on improving the air quality, which of course takes out you know, the pollutants that end up in the water eventually, and so you've improved the, the water quality as well. And when you consider that, that you know, ports like Singapore and Shanghai and Hong Kong are some of the largest ports in the world with some of the, you know, the most significant traffic, um, you know, some countries in Asia are, are, are prime candidates uh, for this emissions control area designation.